Think not, the Lord came, be peace on earth. The king gives us a sword. Shalom in the name of the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Time of Night Watchmen. Time of Night Watch, time commentary information, Bible prophecy, and stuff. Well, it seems as of late, uh, certain issues have come upon my fellow believers and those Christians who are still unsure of where they stand on certain subjects. So I think I do a little personal intervention based on my own testimony and help give light to where I stand on certain issues. For example, my take on church, quote unquote, and why. It's a... It's funny how certain scriptures just keep on repeating themselves over and over again and trying to convince me to, to continue to go to a building or church, if you will. And uh, But the thing is, the Lord taught me something a little bit different. Again, we look at 10, Hebrews 10.25, of course, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Not forsaking the assembling. Hmm. Interesting. Let me ask you a question. What constitutes an assembling? Hmm? We'll get into that, of course. Then again, what exactly is a church? So basically, this is my take because this is my testimony. And uh, and I, it, it's personal, as, as you should have as well, too, when it comes to personal testimony, when it comes to the things of God. So essentially, this is something that the Lord spoke to me early in my walk. Uh, it's kind of like the very beginnings of my walk. It was just within a couple of weeks, if not a month, if that, where the Lord spoke to me and he said to go forth and test the spirit. So doing as God asked, I went from church to church to church and church. And it was many churches. I happened to be in Las Vegas at the time when this happened in my early days in my walk with Christ. And uh, and wherever I went, you know, I just I just pleaded to God after my walk. I said, God, wherever I go, you're not there. I mean, it was like it was desolate. It lacked it lacked Him. Like, where's your spirit? And uh, and, and in light of that request, he, he made His presence known to me again, and said to me, "Then walk alone with me." Hmm. That's pretty much how that went. So wherever I went, I just he just wasn't there. No matter what church, what building I went to, he was not there. So again, he asked me to walk alone with men. So I, I just want you to understand or try to comprehend where I'm coming from in this perspective, if you will, because my personal perspective as is my personal walk, that again, once you stand in the presence of a holy God, your outlook and perspective is going to change dramatically. You long, you crave, you desire to remain and stay in that presence. So if you go into a place that's professed to be holy, you want to be in that place. If you want to go to a place to worship God, you want to be in that place, in his presence. Because, you know, it, it just isn't, isn't the same without him, if you know what I'm, my meaning. It's kind of like walking into a vacuum. There is no life there. It's 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 breathless. It's airless. It, it just lack again. It lacks, like as of late, it lacks substance. So uh, that was my plea to which God God responded to me that walk alone with Him, and that's essentially what I did <laughs> in my cycle of years of going walking alone with the Lord. The the point of what is His church is is basically wherever you walk and wherever you stand in the sight of the Lord. Now I can't I can't force you to do any differently or think any differently. We're all bent and lent to our own convictions. Of course, if you read in the book of Acts and know anything about the quote unquote church history, you know things had changed when it comes to 325 AD, where church was redefined by a fellow named Constantine, who essentially institutionalized Christianity in his image, not in God's image. Because for, for this it was basically we go to synagogues on the Sabbath day, we have worship, we have fellowship way into the evening, people be healed, people be praying, people be fasting, whatever the case may be. And that's what it was prior to 325 AD. Again, the church was redefined as far back as 325 AD. So what is church, I ask you, in light of my personal testimony here? Let's go on. It's about a relationship. Again, the Lord came to me and asked me to walk alone with him. Because wherever I went, he just was not there. 
Now, can I speak for everybody? No, because I, I don't know where you are in your walk. I'm just giving testimony to where I am with mine. <clears throat> so with great scrutiny, when I enter into a church building in a gathering of quote-unquote Christians, I'm anticipating a way to see what God does, or in this case, doesn't do in, in many cases. So again, what is church? For where two or three are gathered together, gathered, hmm, together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Boy, it doesn't get simpler as that. But yet the religionists will try to convince you to return into that institutionalized building that is a church building versus as a church relationship. Again, Matthew 8, 20 says, 18, 24, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. There, there's your church, folks. And you've got to understand some. 325 AD is a long time ago. So essentially, for generations, people convinced to become Christian and religion only, not anything to do with relationship. Now, mind you, if it is your conviction to partake or participate in such religions, as a born-again believer <clears throat> filled with the Holy Spirit and having a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God, then that is your conviction. I'm not here to to deter or stray you from that point of view. Only that understand is that is a religion, not the church. All these fortresses and buildings we build with all this archaic manner of preaching and teaching is not the church. Hmm. Understand the distinction. Because in, in the Form what Constantine did, did when it comes to institutionalizing Christianity, <clears throat> we find ourselves in this interesting um, enigma, if you will. The Lord says, Thou shalt not kneel before any man or any false god. So, added to the whole Constantinian mindset, which we definitely see in the RCC, and also other religions who have branched off from the RCC, the Roman Catholic Church, we can see is this is exactly what they want. They want you to kneel down before any man or any false god and follow with their kind of dogma or religion, which in many cases is demon religion or demon gospel. <laughs> it's, it's, it's that plain and simple in your face. And yet God also has a word for things of that nature. We also see in the book of Revelation this case, Revelation 18, 4, it says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye receive not of her plagues. So when Jesus tells you to leave because he doesn't want you to be partakers of their sins, which has occurred to me more than one time, then guess where I have to go? I've got to leave. Or continue because I wanted that feel-good lies that people irk for or desire for than actually hearing the voice of truth. And in many cases, as the Lord has spoken, where is your salt? Yeah, because things are not falling into place of what their dogma or quote-unquote doctrine or theology is about, it doesn't fall in line to what God is actually saying to us on a personal level. If they have compromised their souls with the false doctrines and doctrines of demons, then there's only one other place to go. Leave the gathering of people who choose not the way. It can be a very lonely walk when it comes to having fellowship and stuff, but I always notice that even in this time alone with Christ, I've always found fellowship with two or more brothers and sisters in Christ. Always did. So when it comes to the gathering, I always was there for the gathering of two or more people. Again, you may be convicted otherwise. That's not my call. I've been to many churches convicted to go do so and participate and partake, break bread with them, have communion, only to discover it was time to leave because of the iniquity and sins or lack of substance thereof that it was time for me to go. My walk, my relationship with God. Do I get scrutinized by fellow Christians of it? Sure I do, because they're stuck in the mindset of the lie we've been pushed down on for centuries now, 
this institution we call church. With church, as we addressed here, is a relationship with God. For what he says, for where I walk and where I stand in the sight of the Lord, that is his church. And I hope and pray you're at that point too. Wherever you walk, wherever you stand, you are part of God's church. Not a building, not a gathering of people who choose doctrines of demons with a strong, firm doctrinal foundation. That's where we need to be. Where there's a strong, firm doctrinal foundation, that's where we should be. When there's doctrine of demons, we have no business there. Come out of her, my people, so you don't suffer the plagues of her sins. And plagues and sins are many out there these days. I would rather walk alone with God than stand in the fortress of fools and millions of them who choose not the way. Because it is as it is written, there's only one way, one truth, and one life. In Jesus' Jesus' name, amen. And this was Time of the Night, Watchmen. Time of the Night, Watch Time. Commentary, information, Bible, process stuff. See ya. Don't want to be ya. Have a good one. God bless.